now call this meeting of the Cranston City Council to order. At this time, I would ask all persons to shut off any cell phones they may have in their possession. That includes me. Will the clerk please take the roll? Present. Present. Here. Present. 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 Is there a motion to dispense with the reading of the minutes of the last meeting? So moved. Second. Motion made and second. Any discussion on that motion? Hearing none, will the clerk please take the roll? Yes. 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 Please stand and join me in the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Under public acknowledge, acknowledgments and commendations, are there any public acknowledgments or commendations? Are you done? Council President? Yes, Council, Council you, President, President. Vice President San Maria. Thank you, Council President. Um, in our audience today, we have a very um, honored guest, Alessandra Porticalian, uh, who was recently named one of URI's big thinkers. I, I kind of like that, so uh, I saw her on the parade group yesterday and asked if she'd be our guest. I just want to read a little bit about her. She um, had a setback in her life a few years ago. And instead of wallowing, she made a positive out of it and persevered. And on uh, May 22nd, received her Bachelor of Science degree uh, in kinesiology from URI. Um, during the 14 and 15 spring semesters, she completed an internship at the URI Sports Medicine Student Athletic Training Room and is now completing a full-time internship at Cedar Crest Nursing Home, uh, where she works with the rehabilitation, rehabilitation team. Um, she has now graduated and is beginning a three-year doctorate degree in physical therapy. So if you would come forward, Alessandra. These are my favorite things to do as a councilman, is to honor people who uh, really do a good job. You want to come forward? <laughs> On behalf of the full city council, congratulations. Oh, you're welcome. Are, on the public hearings, are there any members of the public who would like to speak on any docketed item? Please come forward, give your name and address for the record. My name is Pauline DeRosa, and I live at 97 Cypress Drive in Carlin City. And I would like to speak to the issue of the proposal for the development of the parcel at 100 Sarkinasset Road. My husband Bob and I have resided at 97 Cypress Drive in Garden City for the past 16 years. In those early years, Garden City was known as a bedroom community. Relatively quiet, safe, and a great place to raise a family. But as history has shown us, development has infringed on some of those qualities of safety and livability. The neighborhoods of Garden City, Garden Hills, and Eden Park have been impacted by those changes. Most notably is the increase in traffic on Sarkinasset Crossroad, Pontiac Avenue, 
and Route 37 westbound and eastbound, as well as Route 295 west ramp. At that intersection, the Shell Station and Brood Awakenings are on opposite sides of the road with customers leaving those lots and trying to turn left across all lanes of traffic and creating a gridlock. This is a nightmare without the addition of any further vehicular traffic. This is unacceptable and therefore begs the question, what is everyone thinking about? I am referring to the proposal brought forth by Mr. Capionato to change the former Davall building site at 100 Sakonas Crossroad into a six-story building that would mimic the aesthetics of the exi existing Chapel View site. I am certain the project, when completed, would be very pleasing to the eye, but that is not our primary concern. Also mentioned in the proposal is the potential addition for a Target or a Costco. You will recall the proposal by Mr. Capionato back in 2000 and 2001 to build a Home Depot at the former Davall building site. That proposal was rejected because of traffic concerns. So we are, a bit, we are a bit perplexed about how this proposal can be thought of as a great idea for the city of Cranston when we are all aware of the ramifications of added noise and traffic to the surrounding communities. We are proponents of development in our city, but with limits. We feel that we are now dangerously close to those limits, and this proposal to develop the former Davall building site will only add to our current traffic nightmares. We feel that prior to approving a rezoning of the aforementioned parcel, a thorough and concrete traffic study needs to be completed and brought before the citizens of Garden City, Garden Hills, and Eden Park for open discussion. Also, please note that the donut franchise, Krispy Kreme, had much difficulty in getting a permit some years ago to house its business on Pontiac Avenue, which is now the Webster Bank. The reason for concern was traffic congestion. Since then, Chapel View has been built, Garden City Center and Garden City Shopping Center have all been upgraded with new retail space. Aldi, Whole Foods, and Brood Awakenings have been added along with the small strip shopping center east of the proposed development, address being number 40, Sakonas Crossroad. And yet nothing was done to address the traffic congestion on Pontiac Avenue. We implore you to give this proposal your careful in mindful consideration as it pertains to the safety and livability of the communities mentioned. Thank you very much. Is there anybody else from the public who would like to speak on any docketed item? Please come forward, give your name and address for the record. Hi, my name is Paul Durfee. My address is 46 Deerfield Drive, North Situate, Rhode Island. Um, I'm here on the same thing, the 100 Sacramento Avenue. Uh, 15 years ago, we fought against a Home Depot going in there. Uh, it was defeated because the people of the area knew what was going on. Uh, right now, we're in the middle of July. Not very many people know what's going on. Uh, Mr. Coates, during uh, the meeting with the planning board, said that uh, he didn't necessarily think that they needed the uh, Home Improvement Center in there. and. If, if it doesn't need to be there, I'd like to see it removed. Uh, as the young lady before me said, uh, there's a lot of traffic in the area. The last thing we need is a big box store with beeping and backing up on the uh, fork trucks, and I'd like to see it removed. Thank you. Anybody else from the public? Representative, 
Hi, good evening, Council President. Uh, I'm uh, State Representative Bob Lancia. I do represent District 16 in Cranston. Um, I am here specifically tonight because of the concerns. Uh, I heard about it a few days ago. I saw the article in the paper. And since then, I have been getting emails and I have been getting phone calls from constituents. My only purpose for being here this evening is to let you know, I think she really read, the letter she read was very succinct, very well written, and I think clearly uh, delineated what the situation is, the concerns that people have. Um, even though I know, I, and I spoke with the folks up, up here on the third floor and a few other folks, I realized that some of the uh, uh, notifications, you know, for so many feet and so forth, it didn't really necessarily reach out to the residents, but they are aware of it, and they are concerned about, obviously, the traffic, as well as uh, the effect on the residential. Um, so I just come here this evening, not for or against, but to let you know that, you know, that as the representative of those folks, I just wanted to make you aware of it. And I would hope, as she said, that before anything was done, that there would be hearings, that people would uh, have the opportunity to speak about it and, and to talk about it, to learn a little bit more about it as we go forward. And uh, so I thank you for your time. And again, um, I uh, just look forward to seeing, uh, you know, obviously people concerned about what's going there, but especially I think to the traffic, and I don't know about any of you, but I travel those same streets every day, and it is getting uh, really more difficult every day just to do normal business and to travel, so that is definitely a concern as well. Thank you so much, Council President. Anybody else in the public like to speak on any talk of the item? Valerie Shelley, 27 Farm Street, Cranston, Rhode Island. I would like to speak on behalf of this proposal. I have to tell you, I'm thankful they're still here after Thursday's meeting. I was appalled at what I heard and what was asked. So, we are 50, 50th out of 50 states and business friendly. Let not Cranston add to that and make it even worse. We need more business. They are proposing, they're being responsible. What they're proposing is getting their ducks in a row. It's not even time yet. I'm sure there'll be meetings up to the zoo. That's not my issue. I'm sure you guys will do everything you have to, but we need to be business friendly. And we especially need to be business friendly here in Cranston. I don't know how to tell you to disguise this, but I'm a lunch lady, not really a high paying job. It may surprise you. My husband will soon be retiring. Social Security, not a high paying place, which may surprise you. So, if you're not gonna be business friendly and increase our tax base in a responsible manner, as these people, I mean, they gave you Chapel View. It's beautiful, it's wonderful. That's their track record. If you're not, it, these kind of things will determine whether we stay here or we fly out of here as fast as we can, because we can't afford to live here. So either you're going to tax me out of my house, or you're going to increase our tax base in this responsible manner, and you're going to be busy, business friendly. Those are your choices. And please, please choose the busy, business friendly. We can't afford to be at the bottom with everybody else in Rhode Island. We just can't. We, we, you have taxed us far beyond what we can bear. And I would like to say just once, with increase in taxes, I mean, he, he's proposing going up to a million two from 650. Guess what? With the increase in taxes, maybe, just maybe, in one of these budget years that I sit here, I will hear not only no tax increase, but a tax decrease. Music to my ears. So please consider those things as you go through this. Thank you. Anybody else in the public like to speak on any document? Roman Kutu, 27 Lee Street, Cranston, Rhode Island. <clears throat> I do agree with this. I just think we're very close minded. Everyone was so close minded about Krispy Kreme for all the traffic, but did they give that much traffic? No, it didn't really. And you know what? Traffic is part of life. But I, like I agree with what she said, this will be done in a, in a relatively good manner with 3,800 jobs leaving the city or more, whatever, there are so many people there. We need something better. We need something there. We need jobs to bring into the state and in the city. 
I mean, I'm looking at this thing here where you're nickel and diamond people for cutting their grass, and now you don't want to bring any jobs in or do anything? Well, just pay them, leave it in an empty parking lot. We just gotta stop being so closed minded in this city. You know, we worry about the little tiny things, and we're not worried about the important things, which is maybe, you know, maybe it doesn't have to be a six foot tall building. But you know what? It needs to do something. And I think we, we need that. We just can't say, oh, we can't do it because of traffic. Because you know what? We did the traffic studies. I saw that with Krispy Kreme. You know what? It never happened. But that's my point. And this stuff with this little $50 here and $50 here for cutting your grass and trash, that's just nickel and dime in the tax base of the city of Cranston. I really think that's kind of, kind of sad in the state of the age. Thank you. Anybody else would like to speak on any docketed item? Hearing none, uh, the public hearing is now closed. Move on to resolution. A resolution in support of um, S3039 commemorating commemorate the 226th anniversary celebration of Hope Day, Birth of Our Nation, sponsored by Councilman Aceto. Motion to approve. Second. The motion was made in second. Any discussion on the motion? Councilman Aceto? Yeah, just a little bit of history. Uh, uh, we were the last state, as you know, to ratify the Constitution. Um, and because of that, um, it was a real tough battle. I guess it was a vote of uh, 34 to 32. I think the two people must have came to Cranston. But anyway, um, and Newport celebrates Hope Day every year, and they sent out a, a letter to everybody, and I happen to be on the chain, um, to write a re resolution in support and to let everybody know that the birth of our nation and the Constitution, as it is amended, um, really happened that day in Rhode Island uh, in May. So that's why I sponsored the resolution. Any other discussion? Hearing none, clerk, please take the roll. Yes. 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 Resolution passes unanimously. Uh, report of committees, Public Works Committee, Chairman Aceto. Uh, thank you, Mr. Council President. This uh, ordinance came in front of the regularly scheduled July uh, committee meeting and passage is recommended. Second. Motion made and second under discussion. Councilman, Council President, President. President. I'd like to just throw a friendly amendment out there. I talked with my colleagues. Um, to add the words in box springs after the mattresses. Um, just so if someone just dumps a bro box spring, they can't use that as a loophole to get out of paying the fine. So uh, I've talked to my colleagues, no one seems to have a problem with it, so I urge on the passage of that amendment. I'll second it. Uh, All right, amendment's been made and seconded. Any discussion on this amendment? Hearing none, clerk, please take the roll. Yes. 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 Uh, any discussion on the uh, ordinance as amended? Hearing none, clerk, please take the roll. Yes. 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 Safety Service and License Committee, uh, Vice President Santa Maria. Chief Thank you, Council President. Uh, this is the Class B Victory and Alcohol Beverage License. Uh, for diversity, uh, was passed unanimously in committee. Uh, I urge passage. Motion second. Motion and made and second. Any discussion on the motion? Hearing none, correct, please take the roll. Yes. 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 Uh, next is Tim Filippo. He asked us to call him Tim, so we don't have to pronounce his first name. Uh, DBA Nick and uh, Tim and Nikki's two. Uh, that's the 80th one. Uh, over caps. Council approval. I urge passage. Motion approved. Second. 
Okay, motion to admit and second. Any discussion on the motion? Hearing none, please take the roll. Yes. 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 Council Bennett? Yes. I want, on behalf of the council, we should best of luck with the, uh, the new liquor license. Thank you very much, everybody. Appreciate okay. it. Good luck. Good luck. Hope you stop by and visit our place. We will. Thank you. Also, Council President, um, at the committee meeting, uh, we, uh, a few of the colleagues, my colleagues, asked for the hours of the four uh, Honeydew Donuts, Dunkin' Donuts, Cranston Bowl, and Wendy's. Um, we held off approval until that time. In front of you now are the closing, opening and closing hours for each of the four um, businesses. I urge passage. Motion to is blocked. Second. second. Motion made to approve the uh, as a block. There's a second. Any discussion on this motion? Hearing, hearing none, you say the roll. Yes. 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 Motion to approve the block. Second. Motion made to approve it as a block and as a second. Any discussion? Hearing none, please take the roll. Yes. 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 That concludes our safety services agenda. Audience Committee Chairman, Majority Leader Akero. Thank you, Council President. Uh, first item 6 16 01, Warrants Amendment of Chapter 10.32, Title 10, Florida City of Cranston 2005, Title Motor Vehicles and Traffic, Cranston Street, Turner Ave, Mitten Street, Three Way Stop. This past committee, sponsored by Councilman Seal. Mr. President, at this point, I'd like to put it back to uh, committee. Mr. I'll second. I'll second that. Mr. Chairman, is a motion returned to committee and a second? Any discussion on the motion? Hearing none, please take the roll. Yes. 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 Next item, 6-16-02, ordinance and amendment of chapter 10.32, title 10, code of the city of Cranston 2005, entitled motor vehicles and traffic, Fortson Avenue, Greenway two-way stops, uh, sponsored by Councilman Botsis, also passed the ordinance committee. Motion approved. Second. Motion remains second. Any discussion on the motion? Councilman Botts. Thank you, Council President. I just explained, uh, explained the committee, but I'll explain it again for the uh, people that weren't there. Um, there's a, uh, Three, currently a three-way stop right there, and uh, there's a hill that during the winter uh, constituents complain that they have to stop going up the hill, and then if there's icy conditions, they can't get going again. So what they want to do is actually take away a stop sign uh, going up the hill, uh, and then keeping the other two stop signs uh, going the opposite direction, coming from the three-way stop. So um, I urge passage. Any other discussion? Hearing none, clerk, please take the roll. Yes. 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 Okay, next item 6 16 03, ordinance and amendment of chapter 10.32, title 10, code of the city of Cranston 2005, title motor vehicles and traffic, Abbott Street and Highland Street, three way stop. Sponsored by Councilman Papalaskis. Motion approved. Second. Motion made to approve and a second. Any discussion on the motion? Hearing none, clerk, please take a vote. Yes. 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 Next item, 6-16-04, ordinance in amendment 
of Chapter 10.32 of Title 10, Code of City of Cranston, 2005, Title Motor Vehicles and Traffic, K Street, sponsored by President Lane, is also passed the ordinance. Motion approved. Second. Okay, motion made. Second. Any discussion on the motion? Hearing none. Clerk, please take the roll. Yes. 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 Uh, before going any further, all these ordinances are dealing with stop signs uh, have to go before the traffic commission for a report. So it's subject to uh, that particular part of the okay, thank you, ordinance. Kevin. Next item, 6-16-05, ordinance and amendment of Title 6.08, Code of City of Cranston, 2005, entitled Animals Generally, Leash Dogs on Walking Trails. This passed committee, sponsored by Councilman Stikos. Motion approved. Second. second. Motion made and second. Any discussion? Councilman Stikos. Yes, this uh, uh, proposal is to make it clear that you can walk your dog on a leash on a trail along the Patuxent River or on Night Farm. So it, number one, makes it clear you can have your dog there, and number two, that the dog needs to be on a leash. Okay, any other discussion? Clerk, please take the roll. Yes. 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 Last item, 6-16-09, ordinance in amendment of chapter 17, Code of City of Cranston, 2005, titled Zoning, Change of Zone, 100 Sakonasa Crossroad. I believe this past committee with only one dissenting vote, um, obtain a motion. Motion approved. Second. Motion made to approve, and there's a second. Any discussion on the motion? Uh, Councilman Stikos. Uh, yes, I'd like to uh, make an amendment. Uh, I'm looking at the online. I'm not, there's not a, a line number, but to uh, where the category home improvement center is listed as a permitted use in this uh, uh, new handcrafted zone that that uh, ye why or yes be changed to no so that a home improvement center would not be allowed in this uh, zone i'll second that motion made and second any discussion on the amendment councilman Fidecchio. thank you council president i apologize i wasn't here for that hearing at family matters so to attend to but um my first question would be to the solicitor through the chair to uh, the, the, the definition of a home uh, center uh, what councilman uh, Stegas is proposing I'm not sure how would you define uh, what would be determined to be uh, that type of uh, operation are we ex I mean, how I, I know I think I understand what you, you're trying to exclude is Home Depot is that the way I get it? Or a little. Or anyone else? I haven't reviewed it, but I believe it's defined in the, the code, the city code, is it not? Home center? Yeah, I... I'm, I'm not sure the def... Do you know the definition? Uh, yeah. Okay. But... I apologize, I haven't... Yeah, no, I, I, I know, I... My other... The issue being, like, what else would it exclude and... and what, you know what I mean, what would be included in that definition uh, because it doesn't say Home Depot is not allowed, in the, you know, specifically. That's that's my only concern. I guess what the, the plain language is, I'll have to review that. I'm going to give me Miranda. Are you still researching this? Or? Yeah. 
based on square footage. You got to see what that is. It's in the definition section of uh, Chapter 17, which is the, you know, of the Code of Ordinances. Home Improvement Center means a facility of more than 30,000 square feet GFA engaged in the retail sale of basic hardware lines such as tools, builders, hardware, painting glass, housewares, and home appliances, garden supplies, and cutlery. That's uh, directly out of the code definitions. So. Mr. Quinlan, is the, um, if I may continue, Council President, so that, um, what, in your opinion, what would that exclude other besides the Home Depot? I mean, there are some stores that carry multiple items. Walmart's, for example, Walmart would carry maybe some tools, but they carry a lot of food as well. Uh, but I think, uh, Council, if you're. Yeah. Okay, sorry. Um, engaged, I think the key language after the definition of how many square feet, the key language is engaged in the retail sale of various hardware lines, and then such as there are examples following it. So I think it's a hardware store or something that sells predominantly hardware by definition, um, and it just gives examples of the types of things. So over 30,000 feet uh, specializing in selling hardware. Uh, basic various hardware lines, but it, but it doesn't say yeah, it doesn't this if you have a, a small tool section, but you have a, a stop and shop, um, would that be disqualified? Um, I mean, I think every every grocery store has a part of an aisle that sells uh, tools or you know pliers and things. But I think if you read the definition in good faith for its plain meaning, I think it does mean that is predominantly a hardware store. And all of those little ex are just examples. They have following words such as. So I think it means a large hard or a hardware store over 30,000 square feet in size. Okay. And as the code defined it at some point. And could I ask through the chair to Mr. Coates as to what their um, feeling is? No objection to that. Thank you, Council President. Mr. Coates, would you mind? Uh, uh, Mr. Chairman, uh, we are setting the foundation for the development. We do not have any current conversations with Home Depot. We're looking to go vertical and to go much more upscale than that kind of development. And so our only concern on this matter is, um, is our concern about our ability to lease to Crate and Barrel, even though they're already at Garden City, or their direct competitor, or someone has lines of business that's similar to that. And so I will say that, uh, you know, we're not putting in a Home Depot. That's, that's not our motive here. We have 300,000 feet, 307 to be exact, 1,000 square feet of office with thousands of employees. That intensity of development allows us, right, to pay more taxes. And we're looking to more intensify the development, not to de-emphasize with a large parking field. So our main area of focus of development is to eliminate that and go forward. And so um, we do have the preliminary site plan process, major land development process, and final site plan process through the planning board, which the neighbors get notified on, the councilman gets notified on, and that we will work through with you on the process. So this only sets the zoning, it allows the general uses and then our proposal is intensity. It allows six stories. So our intent is to build a development that more mimics Chapel View, Mr. Chairman. Thank you. Okay. Uh, Council Vice President Sienna Maria. Oh, can I defer to Councilman Farina? Yes. yes. Okay, so Councilman Farina. Thank you, Council Vice President. Um, my only concern with this amendment is, is not necessarily with the amendment, it's with the definition as it stands. Um, I think of a 30,000 square foot store, I think of potentially a restoration hardware, I think of potentially a crate and barrel, I think of a Douglas Lumber kitchen viewing center. 
Um, these are all low impact kinds of businesses that would be ruled out by removing this definition. Um, I actually recommend we change the definition to increase the square footage to make it more akin to eliminate the lows in the Home Depot, something like 90,000 square feet GFA. Uh, then I could potentially support it, but 30,000 square feet, I mean, a lot of your, your retailers are shrinking. They're going smaller. You're going to see companies like even, even Staples. Um, I happen to work there. They're going from a 60,000 square foot plan to a 35,000 square foot plan. Everything's coming down. And with 30,000 square feet being the only real clarifier, you know, I read this, it doesn't read to me that it says it sells predominantly hardware lines. It just says a facility of more than 30,000 feet can get used to retail of basic hardware lines. It doesn't say they could sell anything else. If they're selling hardware and they're more than 30,000 square feet, if we eliminate them, they can't come. That's my fear with this, with this change. Uh, Councilman Stankos. Yes, uh, I think you'll, if you look at the, the ordinance and the different categories, there's a, a category that uh, Carpionato has included in this uh, proposed zone, which is retail sales establishment large scale. And the definition of that in the municipal code is large scale retail sales establishment means an establishment of greater than 10,000 square feet, primarily devoted to the sale or rental of goods or merchandise to the general public for personal or household consumption or to services incidental to the sale or rental of such goods or merchandise. So a crate and barrel, if it's uh, greater than 10,000 square feet, obviously falls under that definition, not the more specific uh, home improvement center definition. So I think the, the bringing of uh, Target or Costco or Crate and Barrel or these places into the discussion is, is really not what this amendment would do. It would bar just what it says, large home improvement centers of greater than 30,000 square feet. So um, I would urge people to, to vote for this. I think that uh, uh, we don't want to give a, a, uh, a blank check to do this. And we've all seen how the economy can change. I know, you know uh, eight, 10 years ago, there were all these plans for uh, residential development in Western Cranston, and then the economy crashed, and all those, uh, not all of them, but most of them, uh, were put on hold. So when the economy changes or the money is, is better uh, now, uh, better in the future than it is now for certain services, then plans change. And we don't want to, uh, I think, allow a, a large hardware store at this location for a number of reasons, traffic uh, being one, but also because uh, we have a, a great local hardware store that we should not be putting out of business by changing the rules for uh, through, through zoning. Uh, Councilman Aceto and Councilman Botts. Through the chair, Councilman Steichel, just two quick things. I, I guess I drove to Jamestown this weekend and I took the old back road and I believe there was an Ace, brand new Ace Hardware store right in the middle of a Lowe's and a Home Depot, which shocked them. You know what out of me, number one. But I mean, it was probably 30,000 square feet, 35,000 square feet. So um, not that I want to compete with Mr. Durf there, but everybody is downsizing there. And then I started to do a little bit of research, and I know Pat Quinlan did also. Um, if you look at Home Depot, the average size of a whole Home Depot is 130,000 square feet. So that's 130,000. Lowe's right now is, the big ones are 116,000, and they're downsized to 94,000 square feet. Costco is at least a minimum of 130,000 square feet. And I believe we have the developer already on record saying that his intentions aren't to do that. And I'm sure, because I was involved with that 
Home Depot in 2002, that if word got out that a Home Depot would be going there, believe me, I could organize as many people or help organize as many people as I did back then to go to these committees to make sure that it doesn't get built. Um, I think you're looking at some of these uh, marshals now, which kind of home good type of situations, which again at 30,000 square feet, I believe there's a clothing store or something coming up there now that's about 30,000 square feet. It was a TJ Maxx. Um, you know, and, and I just think that again, he was on record saying that you don't make money with those big box stores as a developer. I mean, they're going to be investing millions and millions of dollars. And they, they want to do something that's clean and unique with, ha with having artisan lofts so that the artisans could live upstairs from their business. I mean, we've been talking about that for years in Cranston with the Cranston Print Works and some of these other mills. Um, I, I, and I, I just don't see when a reputable reputable builder and businessman says they're not going to do something, you know, I'm not going to take that right away from, of course, things could happen, but at that point, I have no indication that they're going to violate what they want, so I'm going to vote in favor of this, and I'm going to vote against the amendment, because I think it's tying their hands. Councilman Box. Thank you, Council President. I, I, uh, I'm a little baffled with the definition of the home um, improvement store, because um, I would not go to Durfee's. I would never think of going to Durfee's, no offense, to go buy cutlery. I mean, I don't know why that's even in the definition to begin with. Or, uh, again, uh, home appliances. So if there was an appliance store that wanted to open there and it was over 30,000 square feet, they couldn't do it. Uh, or if they sold appliances. I mean, the definition to me seems overly broad, as uh, Councilman Farina said. Uh, the other thing that was mentioned is uh, we don't want to put Durfee's out of business, but unfortunately that's not what zoning is used for. Zoning is not used to pick winners and losers. Zoning is meant to be used uh, in light of the comprehensive plan. And what the comprehensive plan says is that area of land should be zoned commercial. And we last year we zoned the rear portion of that plot, uh, the separate portion as C5. So this would be in accordance with that as well. Uh, the other things I haven't mentioned that were mentioned in the committee is that this is just the first step involved in the zoning change. Uh, traffic studies was mentioned by one of the speakers earlier. Uh, that's all going to have to be done uh, after this through planning and whatever, uh, and traffic studies will have to be done, go through the planning process. Uh, so all this is in the future. Uh, all this is is a zoning change to bring, us, uh, bring that land in compliance because it's not M2 anymore, it's not industrial, uh, the old D-Wall building. So, Again, and with the planned traffic improvements along with this development, I think will go a long way in helping Pontiac Ave. Um, frankly, I, that red light in front of Aldi's is the one that I think that bottlenecks that whole thing. It's not in sync with the light at the intersection. And if you notice, that's what's backing up a lot of the traffic, especially in the evening. But that's, you know, neither here nor there on this. But um, I'll be voting against the amendment. Uh, if the definition of a home improvement center was clearer, where it just said it cannot be a hardware store over 60,000 square feet, I would think that would be a reasonable uh, solution, but it doesn't. It's, it has other items in there that I think could exclude. Restoration hardware is a great example of that. So, um, again, I would be voting against the amendment and voting in favor of the uh, zoning change. Thank you. Councilman Arquero. Thank you, Council President, um, on the amendment. Um, Councilman Stiko's amendment just is adding a safeguard for the constituents of Ward 6 and probably one of the best businesses we have in, in Cranston, Durfee Hardware, has been here for eons, um, paying taxes in the city. Uh, it's just saying that if, if Capionato proposes, it gives a proposal that's over 30,000 square feet, then that proposal will come before the city council. There will be public hearings. The public will be able to come, uh, uh, you know, decide and debate and discuss what's going on. If we don't pass this amendment, we've tied the hands of the city council. Any proposal Capionato gives will go before the planning board, which isn't an elected body. They're appointed by most of the mayor. And uh, the public basically won't have a forum to uh, uh, discuss what the proposal is. So this amendment doesn't prevent 
Capionato from doing anything. It just says, if Capionato makes a proposal that is in excess of 30,000 square feet, that proposal must come before the city council. So you're empowering the city council, you're empowering the people, and it's the right thing to do, and I'll be supporting the amendment. Uh, Councilman Aceto. Um, I believe it was Councilman Botts who mentioned something. This is directed to uh, city solicitor and Mr. Quinlan. So, Mr. Quinlan, if, if we pass this amendment, aren't we kind of protecting a business from zoning? I mean, you're passing a zoning law protecting a business? I mean, you really can't do that, can you? Just so I'm clear with your question. So what you're saying, if, if the pending amendment on the floor is passed, that would be helping a business and we can't do that? Is that the question? Yes. Um, in, the, in the abstract, no. Okay, in the sense that anytime you grant zoning to build something, it creates competition for someone in the city. Uh, if the specific reason for adopting an amendment would be to protect a particular store or to oppose an amendment just to protect a particular store, I think a court would find that suspect. But in the general sense, I mean, every time you put in a retail development, it creates some competition with someone else in the city. I think if the specific intent and the articulated intent is to protect a particular business, I think you'd be in trouble on the ordinance or the change. Councilman Farina. Thank you, Council President. You know, one thing I'd like to add that we talked about at length at the committee meeting and at the Zoning Board of Review, which uh, I was at, I believe you, Council President, were at, and I think Councilman Pavlosos was at, um, there was a lot of discussion about if they were to put some kind of retailer there that would put uh, stress in the system, this would have to go from DOT because it's a state road. DOT would have to give its first approval before we could do any kind of change. And to get a DOT approval is rather difficult if you're not conforming to the laws to, to make traffic patterns uh, more feasible. Uh, so there are safeguards in place if for some reason they wanted to go against um, the will of the people and put a Home Depot there. Um, you know, I know the council doesn't have those safeguards, but as a councilman, I look at the Planning Commission's recommendation of voting six to one to change the, the zoning to a C5 in accordance with our comprehensive plan that we approved. I, I just, this is something we have to do based on our comprehensive plan that we approved. So to just start spot zoning and picking and choosing what we want to enforce and not enforce, as a council, I don't think that's my prerogative. Uh, Councilman Favecchio. Thank you, Council President. Um, to follow up on that, I mean, I, I definitely was against the Home Depot uh, that was in my, that's in my district that where Mulligan's Island is actually where it was proposed, but way back when, and I, I certainly didn't think that that was a good location for it. Of course, the, the traffic situation there is much, much worse, um, and that's really not a good location. There's, there was no highway access from there, to, uh, from that site. Um, I guess my, my bigger concern is I guess none of the Home Depots are under 130,000 square feet. Uh, they're, they're awfully big box stores. So I'm a little bit uncomfortable with the 30,000 square foot rule and how it might affect other businesses. I'm not sure if we should change the, do some you know, language change in the, uh, in the ordinance so that it's even clearer what, uh, what we're restricting. I mean, I, I would feel more comfortable if it was a larger square footage so that if you had a crate barrel or restoration hardware type business, they wouldn't be effect affected by this because someone might file a lawsuit to stop the, uh, them from, from doing it. So, I mean, I understand the intent I, and I certainly don't want to see a, a Home Depot there uh, if possible, if it's at all possible, unless they started building 25,000 square foot stores. Then you couldn't stop them even under this, this change. So I'm not sure that this will have the uh, desired effect if, uh, you know, if some things change without the language change. Councilman Stikos. Um, <clears throat> I just, I have to respond to something that Councilman Farina said. Uh, it kind of flipped logic on its, on its head. Um, the, what we're looking at is a proposal that makes, that creates a specifically new zone just for the Carpionato Corporation. It's not just C5. It's C5 with bells and whistles as we went over in committee. So they've gone through the, the zoning code and they've made 
a whole list of things permitted in a C5 zone that are not usually permitted in a C5 zone, like a hospital, a nursing facility, uh, were a couple of examples that were given. There was a whole list of them. So that's number one. And number two, this does not, uh, we don't have to change this to C5 to comply with the comprehensive plan. The comprehensive plan says that that is a, is a highway, um, highway commercial. And highway commercial can be C3, C4, or C5. That's our choice. So it's, it's not spot zoning, and the proposal is a special zone for the Carpionato Corporation. Any other discussion? Uh, I'll put so my two my cents. My question, I just want a question for, for the Chair of Council and CEO. When he raised the question that we're changing the zone for a specific business, what business was he alluding to that, that was mine? Did you have a business in mind? Were you? Yeah, no, I'm just general hardware. I mean, if you're, what if you're a kitchen and cabinet place? What if you're a tile shop? You sell tile stores. I mean, it's, 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 you know, you go into some of these um, mini home improvement centers. I mean, in South Kingston, the lumber yard has a, a kitchen and bath place. You go into one park, it's granite and tile. You go into the next park, you can rent tools. You go into the next park, you can buy tools. All right, thanks. Okay. And it's probably 30,000 square feet or less. Okay. Uh, I'll end the conversation with my two cents. Uh, the Planning Commission, as Councilman Farina said, passed this six to one. This debate was held before the Planning Commission. We were there, we listened to it. Many of the same questions that came up tonight were ask at that, that meeting, and they passed it six to one. They also mentioned that Rhode Island Department of Transportation will be working with the Copionaro Corporation to straighten out the intersection at Pontiac Avenue, be a joint venture, similar to what they did on New London Avenue, to straighten out that mess. Copionaro Corporation assured us before the Planning Commission, before this council, before the committee, that there was not going to be a Home Depot or a Lowe's at that location. They assured us of this. And I'm sure you put it in writing if you need it. Everybody thinks they have an ulterior motive. But they haven't shown us in any of the developments that they have an interior, ulterior motive. Whatever they said they were going to do, they've done. They've got a track record um, that's beyond compare. When you look at Chapel View and what they've done with that particular area, I think it's admirable. In addition to that, currently they're paying about $500,000 in taxes. It's going to increase when this project is completed to $1,200,000, double the taxes that we are currently getting. $500,000 in new taxes will go a long way in this city to keep the tax rate stable for the taxpayers of this city. It's one step in being business friendly. If we're not going to be a business friendly community, then our taxes will continue to climb. So we have to make a decision. We allow no businesses in Cranston, or we allow businesses in Cranston. And I understand the safeguards that Councilman Stikos is trying to put on there. However, I think they're too stringent. And I'm going to be honest with you. I admire Councilman Stikos. I think he does a great job. But I have to disagree with him on this particular subject, and I'll be voting for this. The clerk, please take the roll. Point of information on the amendment. This is the amendment only. Right. On, the, on the amendment. No. Yes. No. Yes. No. 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 
now on the ordinance itself. Any discussion? Yeah. Councilman Fabecchio, then Councilman Stikos. Okay. Thank you, Council President, and uh, thank you for indulging me a little since I was not able to attend that meeting. Um, I have a couple of questions on the traffic issue, um, if, I, if I may, through the chair to Mr. Coates. Um, because I remember we've been dealing with some other uh, land that the that Carbonado Corporation has been uh, attempting to buy on the London, which will have some impact on this um, development in the future. And, I, and I, I believe that that's still a viable um, project as well, which could help alleviate some of the tr congestion from the entrance on New London Avenue. Is that, is that correct, uh, Mr. Coates? Yes, sir. Uh, just, uh, just recently, the mayor forwarded the, uh, um, a requested communication to the State Department administration requesting that they expedite that. And that process has been going through uh, the Department of Administration and the State Properties Committee. Uh, also, uh, Councilman Fabicchio, Mr. Chairman, we are by hand and hand copy of the ordinance. No, go right ahead. So, what Councilman Farina referred to earlier is that as part of this ordinance, which was required by planning staff, as a part of this order, ordinance, uh, Mr. Mr. Council President, it requires that. Um, that the development meet all the requirements of the traffic ordinance passed by the planning commission. And so that includes not only, uh, those are rigorous requirements that we have to go through. So when the final traffic generation is determined, then we would have to go through the improvements required to meet the city's independent traffic engineer who and, reviews it. And that, so that everyone is aware that uh, piece of land on New London would, would create a jug handle entrance, a right hand turn into Chapel View. That is correct. Yes, sir. It would create, it'll, it facilitates left turns in and enhances the front door nature of the project so that Pontiac is a secondary or tertiary entrance. We're also working with the state and with the city about a separate entrance from. Uh, a 37 on ramp, and so that we would keep uh, traffic off of Pontiac. And so we share the concerns on Pontiac. We've completed the plans, Mr. President, for Pontiac. They're at the 95% stage. And um, I know the state would uh, love to hear from the council in a future resolution encouraging them to spend the state dollars to complete the redesign of that intersection. We've designed it. That's private-public partnership, and we're working with them to have that completed, Mr. Chairman. Again, no work will be done here on site prior to two years from now, and this allows us to go and do design and work with you, of course, as the local council, and um, to make sure that all traffic concerns are addressed. These people won't speak again, but I went and met with them. I told them I'd meet with the neighborhood prior to us doing anything. And so many of you will still be in these same seats, and I'll repeat that. We'll meet with the local community, we'll meet with our neighbors, we'll hear their concerns, and we'll work to address those so that we want to make sure that the traffic situation is addressed. Our huge investment at Chapel and at the training school and its development means that we want to make sure that traffic works. So there'll be, you're proposing an entrance, a separate entranceway, basically off of 37 West going westerly into the, the this new piece that of That is correct. Okay, thank you. Uh, Councilman Farina. Thank you, uh, through the chair to uh, Mr. Coates. What is your total investment between the citizens property and Chapel View? Would you say it's in excess of $100 million? I would say it's in excess of $200 million. Thank you. Um, I look at Chapel View, I look at Chapel Grove, I think that is one of the nicest, if not the nicest, mixed use plan developments in this city. It has condos, corporate offices, small-scale retail, large-scale retail, grocery. It is the Taj Mahal. 
Behind it, we have another parcel that they want to develop in the vein of Chapel, Chapel View. Again, small scale retail, offices, living spaces. You don't put a tin roof carport on the Taj Mahal. You don't build a Home Depot or a Lowe's behind one of the nicest developments in the city. I understand it's a fear, but I don't think Capriano has any intention of doing that. I believe in the company. They're a local homegrown company. Everything they've come, when I've been on this council, everything they've said they were going to do, they've done. So I'm going to vote in favor of this change. Councilman Stikos. Yep. Um, I think we need to be really clear about what we're voting on here. Uh, we're not voting on whether we like uh, the Carpionato Corporation. We're not voting on whether we think there should be economic development in the city. What we're voting on is giving away our power to have influence over this project before we know what it is. That's what we're voting on, because once we give up the zoning, the zoning, we're out of the picture as far as having any power over the situation. Yes, I'm sure the Carpionado Corporation will meet with us, and meet with the neighbors, but they'll be in the driver's seat. And the purpose of uh, zoning is so that there are some controls in this, and the city has some, some leverage in a zoning situation. And I've sat here on other zoning issues, and councilmen have eloquently said, I'm not going to vote for a zone change until I know what's going to go there. And we don't know what's going to go there. We know what the, the current plan is, but it's at least two years out. It could be seven years out if Citizens doesn't get its uh, new campus ready in time. And the planning department and the, the uh, site plan review process, or whatever it's called now, the uh, development plan review process, the Department of Transportation, they're going to be they're going to be tinkering at the edges. And if you want to have control over this situation, like we should have had control over the stop and shop situation, then you'll vote no on this. You'll ask the corporation to come back when they have a specific proposal and, the, and then deal with it at that point when you know what you're voting on. Councilman Aceto. I just want to kind of ask Councilman Steichel's opinion on this. So in Weston Cranston, it's probably maybe one uh, company building right now, that's for certain, they're building homes, yet there are probably um, 15 or 16 other parcels that could be developed that have been changed that you can put homes on. So didn't we do the same thing there, or didn't previous councils do the same thing there? Lose control on open space, no less, not urban environment, but open space, and we lost the control of the open space. Is that not what previous councils have done. I'm not saying it's right or wrong, but I'm just... I mean, I don't know the history that, it, that would depend on what the zoning was before. I mean, if people have a... a uh, you can build on two-acre lots on the, on the woods, then you're, you don't have power to stop that. But when you make a zone change that allows uh, just like the Carpionato Corporation has certain rights on that property right now that they can they can build certain things, but it's the when there's a change, the council shouldn't give up the zone change until it sees what the the whole plan is. Councilman Vecchio. Thank you, Council President. Um, through the chair to, to make Councilman Stikers, but isn't that the, what we face with every zone change? I mean, we don't know exactly what's going to go in. We don't know if they're going to build modular homes on a, on a residential site, purple houses. Uh, they could build basically whatever they want. 
the planning commission takes over after we after we vote on the zone and we create the uh, the zoning someone else takes control over looking at all those things including the the uh, traffic engineers the state if they're involved so i know you want to have control of everything but we're, we're not going to know every business that's going into a certain zone um, at the time someone begins to try to market it i mean they, they can't tell us that you know exactly who's going in i think they that we we do our job and then planning and the administration does its job and hopefully come up with a very good um, uh, business environment but I, I just think that you know you have to look at the the type of development i mean it's certainly high end in that you know in the whole area i'm fortunate enough to represent that district but everything in garden city and chapel view seems to be high-end development they're not looking to build anything that uh, anything cheap uh, for lack of a better term so I, I I don't think that um, I don't think we give up total control of everything. I, I don't think they even have any idea as to exactly what's going in there at this point in time. So I mean I, I think they do a good job with everything they do, and um, I think we have to we set the zone, we set the the parameters, but then we have to let businesses do their thing and and come back, you know, if there are any issues. But. Um, I, I'm going to vote in favor of it, even even though I, I will watch the traffic issue very closely because that's something near and dear to my heart. Um, I, I know the people in the area. I've communicated with them over the last week, um, and I and I you know I know what goes on with the traffic there. So, I, I, but I think that some of the plans that um, Mr. Coates has detailed, even prior to this, um, will help I I improve the traffic situation on both ends of this this development. Councilman Freeman. Thank you, Council President. You know, one of the things that came up in the Planning Commission was discussion around uh, tra transitioning this property from a business, which is open every day from 8 to 5, to a retail home type establishment. Um, so currently there's 1,700 people working in that citizens building, so at the hours of, between the hours of 7 and 9 and 4 and 6, traffic is the worst. As the par parcel transitions to more of a mixed-use development, you won't see the same kind of peak traffic at the times we see it today. It'll be more level set, more aligned with an, a day-to-day -day operation of a retail business. That came up in the planning discussion. That question was asked. Uh, that information was given by the planning department. I just thought the, the public should hear what, what came out of that planning session, because planning session, sometimes a lot of people don't get to go to those meetings. Uh, Council Majority Leader Arquetto. Thank you, Council President. I just uh, asked the Council for some, some leeway here. I'm going to start off with a little story. Uh, I played a lot of sandlot baseball, played a lot of baseball. started in sandlot baseball on the east side of many open lots back then. But um, we used to play with a, with a man or a young boy that if, he, if the call didn't go his way, he'd take the bat and the ball and he'd go home. Many of us didn't have a bat or a ball. So we had to be very careful. And when he was running the bases or calling strikes, what we did. So we always gave him a lot of leeway. Um, I supported Councilman Steichler's amendment. I didn't get the call. Uh, it didn't go my way. But it doesn't mean I'm going to take the bat and the wall and go home. Um, I think the project, uh, the essence of it is, is good for Cranston. We want to show that um, the city is business friendly. We want to keep uh, Capionaro here. Uh, they've done wonders uh, in Garden City. So even though I didn't get my call the way I wanted it, I'm, I'm still going to support the projects. I see some good in Council President. Okay, thank you. Any other discussion? Hearing none, please, please take the roll. Yes. No. Yes. 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 Ordinance passes. Thank you, Mr. President. Thank you, Councilman. Do you want this? Uh, Finance Committee, uh, Councilman Stikos, Chairman. I just need a minute to get back on the right page here.
Okay, we have uh, the monthly real estate tax abatements, real estate tax abatements recommended by the tax assessor. Motion approved. Second. Motion been made. Second, any discussion on the motion? Hearing none, clerk, please take the roll. Yes. 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 Let's go. Yep. Yes. Uh, next is the motor vehicle tax abatements recommended by the tax assessor. Motion approved. Second. Motion made. Second. Any discussion? Hearing none, clerk, please take the roll. Yes. 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 Uh, <clears throat> uh, the next item is the ordinance ratifying the new contract with the, the uh, Teamsters Union, a three-year contract. This was unanimously approved by the Finance Committee. Motion approved. Second. Motion been made and second. Any discussion on the motion? Mary Nunn, clerk, please take the roll. Yes. 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 Uh, the next resolution was, uh, I believe, sent to the full council uh, for consideration, but there were some questions that Councilman Aceto and perhaps someone else asked that uh, we were assured would be answered uh, tonight. So I think someone needs to move. Motion approved. Second. Motion been made to approve. There's a second under discussion. Councilman Aceto, did you have questions concerning this? I, I did, but I kind of, uh, I'm a little bit of a old age here, and I remember the question. I guess it I, had to do I think, well. your, I think your question was, who do we have mutual aid right. agreements right. with, right. and did we have mutual aid yes. agreements with these places? I, I can respond, uh, Mr. President. Yes, please, Mr. Rawson. I think it was four questions. Uh, the first question was, which cities or towns currently have agreements with Cranston? Um, Colonel Wink was, was kind enough to answer these. It, from his research, it looked like we had agreements with the city of Warwick and the town of Johnston. Um, so, but obviously, I think the police chiefs um, <coughs> wanted to get together, and all six adjoining towns and cities wanted to have it. So it will be six if you approve the ordinance. Um, the colonel wants to keep the six because they're all adjoining, so he wants to add four. Um, so the second one, does he intend to add or remove? The colonel intends to add four. I believe that's Situate, West Warwick, Coventry, and let me see the sixth. Providence. The third question was, if a police officer or firefighter is injured in another city or town, who's responsible? Under statute 42-42-2, it's actually already codified by the state. The Whoever municipality does the mutual aid, for example, if Cranston goes to Providence, if there's any issues, it's still Cranston's responsibility fiscally and vice versa. So that's actually by statute. Uh, I think they did that just to clarify any litigation. So under Rhode Island General Law 42-42-2, it's the responsibility of the city that employs that individual. Finally, when will the existing mutual aid agreements expire? Uh, the Colonel Winquist said apparently there's no expiration, but the Rhode Island Police Chiefs Association felt that agreements should be renewed every three years um, and ratified through city council. And, and this is just police? Uh Correct. Sir, then not, not fire. Correct. My understanding is this this ordinance is just police. Is that what you're saying? Oh. Apparently, there's a statewide fire compact that's already done within the state. So it's actually just the police that need to be codified by the council. So those are the four questions. Uh, council Mosito. So, so just, no. a follow, just a follow up question to that would be uh, when there's a disturbance or uh, somebody needs backup at the uh, ACI. Uh, the state police usually handle it, is that correct? Or do we go in there 
and help. Okay. So my understanding is state police have troopers that are actually on the campus stationed okay. at the ACI. So we don't get involved at all, correct? Well, you know, some of these issues came up with the issue of the uh, redistricting. My understanding, though, that the police often do respond if they have to. If the Cranston police are contacted as a matter of courtesy, they will go to the ACI. Well, if that's the case, I'm going to propose an amendment, because if we're mutual aid, then I'm going to propose an amendment that each one of these municipalities who are part of this contract take a turn like one month out of the year and provide backup to the ACI so that we're not just <coughs> allocating our resources there. Well, I don't know how often it happens or anything, but if we're part of a mutual aid agreement and we're back up at the ACI and then it's like, you know, NATO or something, then everybody should take turns backing up. That's <laughs> backing up the ACI, if you will. You so, know, I, I admit that might be worth some more discussion, uh, Councilman, uh, before okay. the amendment. I mean, so that's, I'm, that's I'm, I'm not, not going to maybe vote on this for that reason. Uh, that if it's part of a mutual aid agreement, then they should be providing mutual aid at the HCI, whether you're from Situate or Woolwick or Coventry or wherever you're from, not just leave the onus on us. Okay. Uh, Make Chris agree with it. Councilman Fecchio. Thank you, Council President. Um, I don't know if Mr. Rawson can answer this question or not, but what, is there any imbalance between the, the um, aid that we give to cities such as Providence, which is, has greater demands, um, or any of these other cities. I mean, what's our benefit to this? Yeah, I, I think that's something for Colonel Winquist maybe to study. I don't know the exact numbers. If we're giving more aid than vice versa, that's a very good question. I don't know. Colonel Winquist, if you want to propose that for next, I can certainly uh, inquire of Colonel Winquist the numbers. I think they'll have the numbers. To be honest. I mean, I, I'm just concerned that we're providing more aid to yeah, right. other cities than they're giving back to us, not just at the ECI, but on the borders, or if they need help in province, we would have to go there. Is that correct? I can't speak to that, but I can tell you Colonel Winquist is glad these mutual aid agreements are in place, so I don't think he has a real issue with the mutual aid, but okay. again, if you want those numbers, you can probably get them. Okay, thank you. Yeah. Uh, to, to Attorney Rawson, um, so these mutual aid agreements are already in place. We're just ratifying an actual. Oh, that's correct. They've actually already been signed by the colonels of each department, and this is a ratification. And by the way, most municipalities have done this now in Rhode Island because the Police Chiefs Association have recommended it to all 39 municipalities. Thank you. <coughs> Any other questions? I, I have one from Solicitor Rawson. And I'm going to follow up with Councilman Favecchio started earlier. If you look at the mutual aid the fire department in Cranston gives to the city of Providence, it costs us hundreds of thousands of dollars a year that we pay our employees to go to Providence because they don't have enough equipment or employees to cover the city. And I think the same thing happens with their police department. Judging by how everybody's leaving. I'm going to vote no on this for that reason only. If it's costing taxpayers this city hundreds of thousands of dollars to cover Providence's fire department, I'm not going to cover their police department also. Okay. And, um, you know, again, the fire is more state regulated. Um, and not to bring it up, but that's something that might be more of a community service grant where the state should try to reimburse us. I don't know. Maybe it's a sore subject nowadays, but that's something the state it's should be. It's been a sore subject for me for 14 years. Okay. Okay. That's something that might be worth recommending that the state reimburse us for. Okay. Councilman Botts. Thank you, Council President. Uh, Mr. Ross, I have one more question. Um, at the beginning, you mentioned how uh, we currently didn't have an agreement with Providence. It's my understanding from Colonel Winquist's research that there was an agreement with Providence in the, in the files. That there was or was not? There, there was, excuse me, I'm sorry. There were agreement with Warwick and Johnson. There wasn't a president. So, so if Providence requested Cranston uh, mutual aid, we have gone? We, we do, would have gone. There's just no written agreement. 
but there is kind of an unwritten agreement in the past, and that's kind of why we want all six now. And if, this is pretty symbolic more than anything, because if we, let's say this got voted down by the council, there'd still be mutual aid between the towns? I, I would say, so I can't speak for the police and fire, but I would assume yes. All right, thank you. Councilman Farina. If it would make my colleagues in the council more comfortable, since this is already in place, uh, we can send this back to committee till we have your questions answered, your concerns related, potentially have the colonel will come before us and give us a five minute speech as to why this is important. I have no problem with drawing my motion to approve, making a motion to recommit it back to committee. Thank you. I, can I, can I, I echo your, your concerns too, um, especially the, the location of our police department is a uh, hop, skip, and a jump from Providence. So there's a, there's a, there's a, there's a you know, convenience there. Um, Can I get a second on my motion to recommit? So um, I, I would um, support uh, Councilman Farina's uh, motion to recommit. So we could just ask a few more questions of, of the group. Are you second that? I would second that, yes. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Councilman Botts. Council President, I, I, was this asked at the committee meeting? Did, was there any opinion on the uh, police union regarding this? I don't remember if was, that was answered. All the more reason to be I, I, it's my understanding it was not asked of the police. Okay. Well, maybe we can ask that if it gets recommitted. Okay. Uh, one more just point, uh, uh, Mr. Yes. President. I believe most of the other municipalities have already granted uh, this, have already approved this uh, resolution slash ordinance. So, you know, it's really just a matter of making it mutual. Okay, there's a motion to send it back to committee in a second. Any discussion on this motion? Councilman Aceto and Council Vice President Sandra. I just would like to ask the administration to maybe have Colonel Winquist at that meeting so we could just direct the questions towards him and see if he can convince us. I was going to ask the same question, Colonel. Okay, the administration got okay? that? Okay, they understand. I was going to ask exactly. Okay, any other questions? Harry Nine Click, please take the roll. Yes. 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 Okay, moving on. Claims Committee. Uh, Chairman Favecchio. Thank you, Council President. This we only had one, two, three, four, five uh, settled claims. This is the last claims committee, um, for probably totaling less than $1,000. So that's all, and that's all I have. Okay, thank you. Uh, public hearings. Any member of the public like to speak on any item, docketed or undocketed? Okay. Going once, going twice. Public hearing is now closed. We'll move on to election of city officials. The Zoning Board of Review. Uh, Christine Cole uh, removal. Ms. Cole is no longer able to serve on the Zoning Board of Review due to personal reasons. She has served on the board in the city faithfully since her initial appointment, and we thank her for her service. In order to fill her position, we must officially vote to remove her pursuant to Section 3.18 of the City Charter. Is there a motion? To motion remove? to remove her according to the City Charter. Second. Motion made and second. Any discussion on the motion? Councilman Farina. Uh, was there a letter requesting the removal? I know in the past City. we got like, just a, a thing saying, please remove me from this board. City Clerk, could you uh, explain what's exactly transpired? Uh, yes, we were contacted initially a, a while back by uh, Steve Riel, who's the secretary to the board. Um, Ms. Cole had made an announcement at the December meeting um, that she had some personal situation. And since that time, she has not attended any meetings. Uh, they have tried reaching her on several occasions uh, to no avail. The charter requires that we uh, send them uh, 10 days written notice, and uh, we did do that. Um, the letter was returned, um, is undeliverable. We have no forwarding address, and she has not contacted or responded to any emails or phone calls. Okay, thank you. I just wanted to get a little due diligence on it. <laughs> 
Uh, any other discussion? Hearing none, could please take the roll. Yes. 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 Uh, Paul McFarlane, uh, a new member of appointment from Ward 3 and 5 uh, to the term to expire July 28, 2019. Motion, Motion to approve. Second. Motion to be made and second to approve. Any discussion on the motion? Hearing none, clerk, please take the roll. Yes. 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 Uh, Lori Carlino, uh, an alternate reappointment. Motion to approve. Ending July. Second. 2017. Motion to be made in second. Any discussion? Hearing none, could please take the roll. Yes. 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 Uh, the Cranston Library Board of Trustees, Frederick A. Miller, reappointment term ending July 25th, 2019. Motion approved. Second. Motion made and second. Any discussion? Hearing none, quick, please take the roll. Yes. 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 2019. Motion approved. Second. Motion made. Second. Any discussion? Hearing none, quick, please take the roll. Yes. 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 Uh, executive communications, report of hiring special counsel, etc. Pursuant to Charter se Section 1505. Mr. Mr. President, the report on the hiring of council has been submitted to the members of the council uh, by the legal department. I've also uh, asked the clerk to distribute to the members of the council a report submitted by the building inspector, uh, his annual report on impact fees. And I believe uh, Solicitor Rawson will give his report on settled claims. Okay, thank you, Mr. Cook. Well, Mr. President, on the settled claims, um, the first um, 2,600, that was a vehicle that was damaged by a city vehicle, uh, liability was 100%. Um, the 1500 is the same accident, so with that's resolved. Uh, the two later figures, the Baron Baum um, of 16,500 was a flood issue back in 2005, as well as the payment to Amica on a subrogation for 10,000. So that was a flood claim that had been pending for approximately 11 years, and that had gotten resolved for a total of 27,000. Okay, thank you. Uh, Council President Communications. Mr. Mr. Council President. Yes, Council Before President. you do that, can we, can we just, can I ask a question on the <coughs> fees that came in? Is that permissible? The note we got? All right, who do you want to direct your question to? Uh, to direct to Strong. This is showing that we collected 105,000 approximately. That's to end fiscal year 16, is that correct? Or is that, and does that include the extra payment we made to the police station? The uh, 105,000 um, would be just, which is highlighted, would be uh, for fiscal year 16 only. 
Okay, so is a payment there for the police station? Has that been subtracted out already out of that total? Uh, there, has, there hasn't been any payments in 16 that I can see for... Well, we may we passed some sort of ordinance, I believe Councilman Stiko sponsored it, about taking monies from one of these impact uh, categories to pay, was it an extra month's rent, Councilman Stiko, as I recall? Yes, it was to put, pay part of the lease on the police yeah, station. Part of the that, that was part of the, uh, the budget. Right. Correct, and that's for fiscal year 17. So 17. Yes. Okay, so so this this hundred and five thousand will be transferred from the sixteen budget in the various accounts to the seventeen budget. Well, this this hundred five thousand remains. It's not something that gets transferred, but as needed, and if we needed to do the 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 rent, let's say for the police station, we can do that by just drawing from it. So it's not a, really a transfer, it's just taking the money that's there and available. It's a rolling and a, a, a cumulative balance. It can, you know, it's not something where if you don't use it, 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 it goes to like a surplus account. That's, it, it just continues. Well, to, I mean, your impact fee fund, so the monies must remain in here, correct? That's right. But what I'm saying, Councilman, is that that money, if we don't use it, say, it still remains there, right. and you could use it right. the following year. Right. Okay. Okay. <clears throat> Moving on to council president communications. Uh, it's very interesting to read the paper and hear the news that uh, Patrolman Josephson got his job back, and he's now Sergeant Josephson. And you got to. Hefty bonus from the city of Cranston's taxpayers, $215,000. My question to the administration, what were our legal expenses concerning Mr. Josephson? Let's see, I see two or three attorneys here. And I'm sure one of them will give me that answer. Mr. President, I would have to add that up. I don't have that figure. You couldn't give me a ballpark figure? I can't honestly give you a ballpark figure. I'd really have to look it up and, okay, I don't want to guess or speculate. I want to give you a proper figure. Well, um, I'll guess. I'm going to say somewhere around $100,000. Who paid his legal fees? Did the city pay his fee, or did he pay his legal fees? Well, part of the resolution was the legal fees. Actually, was part of the total figure. That $215,000 was not just a bonus for him, it took care of his legal fees also? That's correct. Okay. This council, months and months ago, asked the administration to reinstate Patrolman Josephson to the rank of sergeant after the state police report came out. We were ignored. They wanted to go to court. And they did. And now it cost the taxpayers $215,000. Another black eye for this administration, but more importantly, The taxpayers have to come up with the mistakes that the administration makes. Now I'm going to move on to redistricting. Can anybody in the administration give me a figure how much it's cost us in outside legal fees for redistricting in the First Circuit Court so far? Or do you have to add it up because I ain't got the figures in front of you? Or you can't give me a ballpark figure. A ballpark figure on that, because uh, that's something we've computed more recent, you know, more recently, about two hundred twenty-five thousand. That's over two and a half years to defend ourselves. Yep. Uh, Mr. Moretti, do you have a different figure than that? 
I work with Mr. Cooper and Anna Moreno, thanking them to properly and actually courteously replying to my request for the invoices relating to the redistricting case. Uh, what I my tally through June 30th uh, invoices uh, through, through June 30th this year um, pertaining to matters relating to the first court appeal, not the necessarily the appeal itself, but through that period of time and sequence of events. Um, total $303,651.54. Can the administration give me an idea how much the ACLU is asking for? For their legal fees. Actually, um, uh, Mr. President, they have not asked for anything because at this point they don't have a right to anything. So because it's appeal, they haven't asked for anything. Can we assume we'd be asking for the same amount of money that we are paying our outside attorneys since they're paying their outside attorneys? Um, you can always assume there's some uh, correspond corresponding numbers, but again, I don't know their necessary rates or how many hours they've put in. So it's hard to speculate on what they've incurred. And how much are we paying our lead attorney in this case per I, hour? I believe it's 350 an hour. 350? 350. $350 an hour. I've already said it actually might be 380. I will say that Mr. Benoit normally is in the 450 to 500 range, so that's more of a cut rate. Now we're taking this action and spending all this money so that we don't have to redistrict the sixth ward. Am I correct? Well, we're, we're defending ourselves because under the charter, we have to use the census. So as part of our defense, um, particularly under the US Supreme Court case, to defend ourselves. And if we lose this case in court, it's gonna cost us, oh, $800,000, million. But again, that's exposure that we have to defend ourselves from. If we lose the case. If we lose the case, sure. So, I, I can't speak to the 800, but yes, it would be more. Right. All to protect the demographics of the sixth ward. Well, again, we're defending ourselves in a federal lawsuit brought by the ACLU. It's very interesting how we spend money, in my mind, foolishly. Thank you. Councilman Arquero. Just to elaborate on your theme, uh, First Lady, I just want to get the facts that according to what was said by Mr. Moretti, it was 303,000 for redistricting and 215 for Joseph. That's over 500,000. Am I correct, Mr. Moretti? Um, I can attest to the 303,651 regarding the right. redistricting. Right. And the, and the Joseph matter. The, the settlement of Joseph's 215, apparently, I think that excludes the city's legal fees. Right, but what we know tonight. It's over $500,000, correct? The numbers we get. Correct. So that explains why Ward 3 doesn't have any roads being paid. We have, according to what I received the email from Mr. Barone, there are no roads being paid in Ward 3 this year because the money's been squandered for legal fees. Thank you. Councilman Botts. Thank you, Council President. I believe in uh, Mr. Moretti's original report, he estimated that it was $800,000 for the Josephson case, so we'll be subtracting $600,000 from that. Is that correct? The estimate was between zero and $800,000. So, if you so want you'll to be subtracting $600,000 from that. Thank question, you. If you'd like to subtract approximately six, uh, six hundred dollars from the high end or add two hundred and fifty dollars to the low end again, but that just pertains oh, yeah. to about Mr. President. Yeah, please continue. The 215 pertains to the settlement. Uh, we don't know what the legal fees are, so I'll be adding that to whatever Josephson had before. And that um, there were still other costs with Josephson, so I'll be happy to next month report to uh, Councilman Botts what the total would be for Mr. Josephson. Thank you. I think it just goes to how speculative the uh, report was. We really don't know what the costs were, and I think it was premature to release that. But thank you. In addition to that, I think we have paying legal fees to protect Palomo, uh, Antonucci, in that case also. So when we do next month's report, include all that information. <laughs> Councilman Santa Maria. Instead of talking about the money, why don't we talk about the fact that he's been put back to a job that he was illegally terminated from? Let's not forget that. Councilman. What happened to him was close to communism. That it was actually, they, they made up rules after they demoted him and told him he, 
he violated them. So let's look at that. He's back to the job that he belonged at before the shenanigans of the police department happened. Forget all the money. Our wrong has been righted. Councilman Vecchio. Uh, Farid, I'm sorry. Thank you, Council President. You know, I've said it before, these were avoidable costs. The city's in the place to try to get themselves out of the mess that was created in the police department. Those are facts. The administration is working on these out of these issues. I'm happy that Sergeant Josephson is a sergeant again. Going forward, you know, this stems back to one report, one issue that we keep going back to. I'm glad the administration is slowly but surely fixing these things and moving forward. And, you know, at the end of the day, that's what we all want is to move the city forward. Uh, I know the initial estimate was $8.9 million. Uh, so I'm sure as we add up the actuals, um, the actual number I had that was spent was about 800000 for the police issue. This gets us to about $1.1 million. So as these things get settled, um, the actual that we've spent will go up, and that forecast figure will come down, and my guess is we'll end at about $2 million. Again, avoidable costs. It is what it is. I hope we can move forward in a sense of prosperity, knowing that these issues are being resolved. And Council, I see them. I concur with uh, what Council Farina said. My only concern is this. Um, what happened to the people on the sergeant's list now? Uh, we're going to get another lawsuit from people who are on that list. If there is such a list that they're going to sue because a position was filled. Well, that's between the administration and the union since we were not party to any of this as a council. Well, I'd like to ask the administration if that's the case then. Did anybody from the administration answer that question? The settlement came about, Mr. President, in the form of a uh, order from the federal court. So uh, the union is aware of it, and they're aware that it's, um, it's a court order. And there's, as far as I know, they understand that it's, it's not fodder for, for a grievance or a lawsuit or anything like that. Councilman Seymour. Yeah. Well, May I follow up, Councilman Seymour? We, Sorry, we, we, regard, Mr. Mr. Coop, regardless whether it's a court order or not, there is an existing list, correct? Actually, right now, Councilman, there is no list. There, there is a list? There is no list. There is no list. That's correct. Okay. So, so people, no one... When did that expire? Do we know? Uh, it was recently, um, it did not expire. It was recently used up. It was used up? Yes. So a new list will be put into place. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. Councilman Santa Maria. Thank you. While we're on the subject, um, Director Coop or the, um, Solicitor Rawson, uh, while we're on the subject, what's happening with the Gilbolt case? I think that's the only one we have left, hopefully. Um, that, that uh, Mr. President, the presentation. That is still pending. Uh, there's no active discovery at this point, so that's been kind of in the whole. Have we pattern. spent um, any money um, so far? No, it's been it's been pretty quiet so far this year. It's still in the discovery stage. We're into our fourth year on that. So. Okay. So, um, will we start incurring fees? If discovery gets heated up, I'm not sure where that's headed. That's ultimately up to the plaintiff. So in indefinite period of time on that? Correct. Thank you. Uh, one question I want to ask the administration before I, I recognize Councilman Stankos. Uh, Mr. Strong, prior to the budget, I asked for um, a report, hard copy, on the cost of the state police investigation uh, in the suits and the settlements in the city of Cranston. Uh, you told me you're in the middle of a budget process and you couldn't do it, but you would do it after the budget. Do you remember that? Not really, Council. No, well, you did. You said that to me. Uh, I would like the administration to give us their version of what Mr. Moretti has done so we can compare your report to Mr. Moretti's report and see if we need a third party to give an, uh, an uh, a, a, a different report based on both of your reports. Can you do that for me? 
I, through your, through your request, I will do my job. Okay, any idea what we can expect? It? A month, two months, three months, November 12th? Um, <laughs> yeah, Christmas. Christmas, Christmas. Oh, that'd be good. No, yeah, Christmas. I, I, I would say, give me a month. My last call to me. No, listen, give me a month. And if I need additional time, I'll let you know. All right, thank you. Councilman Stipos. Just a, a question for Mr. Moretti, and then I think a question for the administration. When, when um, you put your uh, numbers together for the Antonucci case and the cost of, uh, of that, did you include any costs for Stephen Antonucci's retiree health insurance since he was allowed to retire? Uh, just one second, I want to make sure I answer yeah. you correctly. You will recall that there's the lower end and the higher end. On the lower end, I did not include health care costs. If you were to include health care costs in, in you know, some of the you know, pensions, uh, that case is, went up to a million five. So it was uh, 728,000 to a million five thirty-one. Again, I'm giving you estimates because I don't have it. A, fine, a, a definite answer. There has to be some reasonable assumptions, and, and that would be it. So on the low end, without the medical costs, is 728000 If you include the medical and the bust out uh, matters, it will come to $1,531,000 is, is the, number, the other numbers that I have. Qu um, to, question to the administration is, uh, Mr. Antonucci, under retirement, I, my understanding was he was entitled to family health care. Uh, I believe he was 43 years old when he retired until 65. Uh, unless he got another job, then he would be reimbursed the difference between the, uh, the benefits that he was receiving on his new job and the benefits he would be receiving from the city. Uh, is Mr. Uh, Antonucci uh, receiving the full uh, health insurance through based on, Yeah, Based on this contract, he's entitled to family health insurance. As a retiree, he was also entitled to family health insurance as an active employee as well. So he Either or, until he reaches age 65, he's entitled to health insurance. Now, mm -hmm. as you just mentioned, if he pursues and gets a position tomorrow, two years from now, there will be an adjustment in how much we have to pay for his health insurance, which is calculated by one of my employees. And, and, and my question is, 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 has there been an adjustment, or is he getting the full health insurance from the city? I believe right now he's getting the full. I'm not aware of any uh, uh, position that he has with another uh, uh, municipality or <coughs> state organization or even a private organization. I don't know that right now. I do know that every year we get uh, people's W-2s sent to us and we adjust what they get for health care based on what they receive. Okay, thank and he'll you. he'll be included in that. Now, if he does, if oh, he'll say be, that again. He will be included in that analysis. Now, if he doesn't have a position, he'll continue to receive the full benefits. But as of now, he's getting full benefits? Yes. Thank you. Councilman Farina? Under abundance of caution, um, this isn't on the docket tonight. Um, I don't want to be violating any kind of open meetings rules. I understand your comments about Josephson and your council president communication, but as we keep going down the path, this isn't on the docket, so I don't know if I want to be violating any kind of uh, open meetings rules. So I would ask our solicitor just to. I'll ask us, uh, Mr. Quinlan if we're violating any rules. I do not believe the 
this constitutes a violation of the open meetings law. I think it's a, a progression of a discussion that was uh, led into by the Josephson settlement, which was in the newspaper today. But I think if it goes too far afield, it could. So let's not go too far afield. Uh, any other questions? Hearing none, council member communications. Councilman Stikos, I believe you had uh, historic Marcus. Yeah, I just wonder if there's a, an update from the administration and the status of this. Uh, yes, there is. Um, we met uh, this week and we reviewed different types of layout signs. So we're in the process of getting, um, getting prices on the signs. We have all the information that we're going to use on the first phase, which will go in front of Sprague Mansion. Good. Um, just a suggestion uh, that you, and maybe you already did this, but Mr. Falarski had some suggestion on the type of uh, of uh, plaque, and you might check with him. I, it wasn't the traditional iron, cast iron. That's correct. Right. No, this is going to be mounted into the ground, kind of a podium style. It'll be about 24 inches by 36 inches, and it'll have laminate with a description, with description of different um, historical marks in that area and then they'll walk to the next. And, and they'll, you know, the, more, uh, the information on the next step will probably be like St. Anne's Church that year. And then they'll walk further down Cranston Street where there's more historical stuff. And we're doing historical research on the uh, Knightsville Library. We're trying to find out what that site was, but we want to add that to the tour as well. Sounds good. Thank you for the report. Yeah. Um, just to, if, I, if I might, just a little uh, campaign story. I know we all have our, our little triumphs as we're campaigning and we get lawn sign locations. And I, I think uh, most of you know that my wife is a, is a physician and she had a, a patient come in to her office and the patient said, I know your husband's last name is different from your last name, but I agreed to put a lawn sign up for him. And, uh, you know, my wife kind of nodded. And then the patient uh, paused and she said, his last name is Lanny, right? <laughs> I didn't put anybody up to that. <laughs> uh, Councilman Farina. Thank you. To continue with the lighthearted mode of the night, um, this weekend was the St. Mary's Feast. I'm not going to go into big detail, and I'll let Councilman Poblosos do it if he so chooses, as his ward. Uh, but it was a great event. Uh, I saw a lot of my fellow councilmen there. Uh, it was a good time to kind of bury the political hatchets, not in each other's backs, but more um, in the dirt where we could, you know, converse. I had the opportunity to talk to Councilman Arquetto, Councilman Aceto, Councilman Vecchio, Councilman Santa Maria. And as always, it was a great event for a great cause. Uh, the city administration, many of the members were there uh, at various nights. Uh, we even had, I think God, had the thunderstorm on Friday night go around us because in Western Cranston, where I live, it was literally ripping the siding off my house. And my wife asked me, where are you, you maniac? I can't believe you're out in this thunderstorm. I said, listen, God doesn't rain on the St. Mary's Feast. Mm -hmm. So thank you to the residents of Ward 5. Thank you to the members of the Feast Society who were on this body with myself. It was a great event, and uh, I was happy to be part of it. Councilman Santa Maria. I'll have to say that I enjoyed this feast probably more than any, because I didn't have to campaign, uh, put stickers on, and then worry about just taking my signs off once. So, um, <laughs> So I, I really, really enjoyed this one. I don't know why, um, but I agree with Councilman Farina to see the smiles on my grandson's faces and your son and daughter's face when they were riding on the rides and the camaraderie and 
old friends uh, coming back to town. Uh, I just think it's a, it's a wonderful, wonderful thing, and I hope it goes on for another 100 years. Thanks. Anybody else? I'll put my two cents in. Uh, I've walked St. Mary's Feast every year since 1976, except for one year when I had a triple bypass. So other than that, I participated in that feast since I was a kid, a child, actually. I used to go by my house when I was very young. Uh, it's a great event, a uh, historic event, and it says a lot about the culture that our grandparents, great-grandparents, brought to this country, the trials and tribulations they went through uh, to get established here, and how we've risen as a community together. And I think that's the most important thing about the feast. It's family, religion, and culture. Moving on. After council communications we have, any old business? No old business this evening? Introduction of new business. Madam Clerk. We have proposed Ordinance 7 1601, an amendment of Chapter 10.121990 of the Code of the City of Cranston, entitled Traffic Control Signal Lights Authorized at Certain Intersections for Broad Street and Sheldon Street, to be referred to the Ordinance Committee for hearing on August 11th. The August meeting of the Ordinance Committee will be held at 7 o'clock rather than 6 for August. Proposed Ordinance 7 16 02, an amendment of Title 12 of the Code of the City of Cranston entitled Street Sidewalks and Public Places for Bus Shelter Insurance to be referred to ordinance for hearing on August 11th, again at 7 o'clock. Resolution urging the Cranston Housing Authority to initiate a recycling program at its properties to encourage recycling for residents right, yeah. of Cranston Housing Authority properties to be referred to Public Works for hearing on August 1st. The following are property damage claims to be referred to the Claims Committee for hearing on Monday, August 1st. Ann Quinn from the alleged incident on April 4th, 2016. Brittany Boudreaux from the alleged incident on May 3rd, 2016. Nancy Struvulli from an alleged incident on May 3rd, 2016. Subrogation claim from Progressive for Kimball and Torres from an alleged incident on May 12, 2016. Lauren Soka from the alleged incident on June 23rd, 2016. Phyllis Hicks from alleged incident on June 28th, 2016. Lisa Marie Pagano from alleged incident on July 1, 2016. Frank Migloretti from alleged incident on July 1st, 2016. David Nassa from alleged incident on July 4th, 2016. And that is all. Is there, any, is there a motion to refer all matters to the C? Well, as read by the city clerk. So, so thank you. Made any discussion? Hearing none. Okay. Uh, the next city council meeting uh, will be Monday, August the 22nd. Yep. Is there a motion to adjourn? Through the chair? Yes. We didn't take a roll call on the motion to refer. Oh, okay. Take okay, a roll call on the motion to refer. I was in the hurry. Clerk, please take the roll. Yes. Council Stifles? Council yes. Fox? Yes. 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 And just one other item, the firefighters contract, um, I ha we have received the executed copy. Oh, good. <laughs> yes, Council Director. Did you say August 22nd or 29th? The, the, the website says the 29th for the next meeting. No. Monday, 22nd. Oh, well, I, just reading the uh, minutes, it says the 29th on here. That was Maria's fault. Oh, it does. Right. Is it the 29th? No, no, what's the fourth Monday? There you go. There you go. It should be the 22nd. That's the fourth Monday. It says here. It's got to be right. The first Monday. Fourth. 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 Fourth.